Hello everybody, today I have the pleasure to propose to you this uh, Key 20 entitled Initiation, an Endless Way Without Finality. Well, why this title? Basically because first of all, this is what I try to explain you through these 20 keys. That's um, the initiatory uh, inner journey is endless because there is no, uh, let's say, diploma, no uh, middle at the end because it is endless. It's like if you aspire to infinity. It's impossible. You can be closer and closer and closer like an exponential, but you never reach it. It's the same principle. Okay, so why without finality as well? Because happiness occurs on the road, not only at the destination. And concretely, initiation can be a source of happiness. The pleasure um, to seek, like um, the seeker, like have a certain pleasure to recompose, to assembly, you know, a puzzle game, okay, at the end when you have finished, okay? What do you do concretely? You put your puzzle on, uh, on the wall, you admire it, you just observe, and, uh, or you just uh, move again and you do it again and again. What's the finality of this? Concretely, it's just a pleasure to uh, recompose it. Actually, initiation should be perceived like this because once again, um, this is a source of happiness, of fulfillment as well. Well, <clears throat> another point as well, which is really important as well, is the fact that everything, absolutely everything, can be perceived as an initiation. Okay? Why and when, in which extent? Every single meeting, encounter, um, people, situation, event, everything could be a source and should be perceived as a source of teaching and experience, okay? For the good, for the bad, all right? This is what we try to see, but actually, when you meet someone, when you have a certain situation, it's just, and it could be, it could be a hardship, it could be a difficulty, a challenge. But as the puzzle game, would you like to play with only four pieces? Like the kids, like two years old or one year and a half. Oh, okay, two pieces, uh, four pieces. Okay, one, two, and then, okay, done. It's done. Is it funny? Is it playful? No. So we have this kind of construction um, puzzle game, which is life. And... Uh, in a certain extent, the fact to play with demantling, assembling, understanding, and so on, is an initiation. Every single moment of your life is a source of inspiration. For the good, for the bad, what does it mean? It means that even when you meet someone who is not, who is fraudulent, who is not honest, you just emphasize it just highlights what you don't want to be, what you are not. So it's, he has his own reason for being. It can arouse that. Okay, you can think that is normality to be honest. And honestly, <laughs> it's not. Unfortunately, it's due to morality, due to education, it's due to many things. But it's not normality. So how to know what you are concretely if you don't do the experience of the contrary. This is what we saw with duality, with the notion of dialectic in uh, Greek philosophy, is to know what you are, you need to know what you are not first, what you don't want to know deeply what you want. And actually, that's our occasion through people, through events, through situation, to know yourself. And as Delphi um, philosophy say, know thyself and you will know the secret of the universe and the gods.
Okay, it means literally that. Okay, it allows you to arouse a certain true self, a higher self, you real I am. Okay, so everything. Even for very, uh, let's say, deep meaning, voluntarily you go to a, a speech, um, a lecture and so on, conference for someone is really esoteric and so on. Yeah, it will bring you something. But actually, even in the innocent remark of a kid and so on, it can be initiatory. Everything can be initiatory. You know, in Buddhism, it is said, before illumination, holding water and cutting wood. After enlightenment, illumination, cutting the wood, holding the water. What does it mean concretely? It means that literally you don't change your habits. You don't change anything, but your perception radically change. Why? Because you just put, you change your filter, you change your glasses. If before it was black glasses, after is glasses with light. So your, your eyes are luminous and everything you observe is luminous. It's through your eyes and this is the reflection of your eyes. It means literally it is chicken and egg because you see things luminous and there is a reflection as well. We say beauty is in the eyes of those who see it, but it's true and the contrary as well. If I say, oh, it's almost, look at, it's dead. So hungry, it's ugly. Yeah, it can be ugly. You can touch it and, ah, it's not uh, smooth or it's not, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's dirty and so on. Yeah, depending on your vibration. Personally, I see like a romance. It's like the tree of life. This is the beauty of life. You know, you can have an initiation by, I see here for a few minutes, two butterflies like a couple. Most of the time we say one, uh, you know, one butterfly can create a tornado in, um, in, in west, east, in east can create uh, with just uh, um, the, 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 the flap, the wings, it can create a tornado in west. They are two. They are literally like flirting or maybe making love. I don't see. I don't know. But it's really inspiring, you know, just for myself. I cannot show you. Unfortunately, I'm not going to turn the camera. Maybe they will come. But you know what I mean? And every single moment is a source of inspiration. Here, I didn't plan. There is a plane. And this is really rare because normally the airport is closed. So why? And so on. You know what I mean? Everything can be a source of initiation. And even a football match, everything could be. You go to a concert and you admire something and so on, even if it was, I don't know, a piece of theater that you know by heart, okay, uh, whatever, Shakespeare or whatever it can be, but actually you can perceive differently with the new way, it can be with fresh eyes or because you are vibrating differently, all right? You know, most of the time, unfortunately, we are just focusing on a single point. You know, it's like the story of the, when the wise mind shows the, uh, the, the moon, the limited person observed the finger. It's the same. And actually, very often, actually, we go to a concert, a philharmonic concert, beautiful concert and so on. And at the end, we ask, uh, what about the concert? How was it? Oh, I don't know, it was strange, the guy was doing like this. And you just focus on the conductor, on his way of being dressed. Oh, it was weird, he has a long uh, dress and so on. Oh, there was a dirty mark on it. And I was focusing on that. Okay, and what about the music? Did you listen a little bit? Okay, oh, oh I don't know, any, any things, any remarks, negative remarks, like, oh, well, he's doing like crazy and he's useless, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't play anything, yeah, but if he's not there, he's cacophonic, he's, uh, okay, so what is the most important in this? You can see many things. First, we can observe 
the sounds, the beauty of the sound. We can see the omission of the guy is playing like this, he's like in trance. He's all his life, he's giving, but he's anonymous because the concert is made of 100, 100 musicians, and he's remote, but you f focus on him. You see, and uh, or it can be many things. He can see like, uh, okay, he, each of them embodies an instrument. Each of them sings to each of them. They create this amazing music, like art, like the art of living, like you, me, and him, and so on. We are literally doing the same. You play one note, I play one note. We play an instrument, and everybody has his own instrument. So we can see subtle messages of what I called the great book of light, of life, sorry. The great book of light is this everywhere, is in the books, the real books, uh, library, physical library. This is in a speech, this is in the nature, this is in the the expression of the living, which has no frontier, is not within a temple necessarily, is not within a prior necessarily, is here, is down to here, is here, is both sides actually. And this is really interesting. Why? You know, what's the name for someone following initiatory journey? Because initiatory literally means to initiate, to begin because it's endless, right? Nobody say, I'm wise and I'm illuminated, I'm awake. No, we are on an eternal process, endless one. And because we are still beginners, still beginners, because the more you evolve and the more you see the perspective are so large, infinite, okay? So first, second part, how do we call someone in this aspect? insider, right? And insider literally means within, within ourselves. Okay? This is really important. Um, that's why know thyself and you will know the secret of the universe and gods. Is for that. Is the inner gazing. This is the inner work. This is the reason why meditate, concentrate, come back to the center, concentrate, center. Medium. Medium in Latin literally means to meditate, okay, to come back to the center. Okay, centripetus, and then centrifugus, centrifugal. Okay, it means that first, inner harmony, or inner, you clean up and so on, and then what do you find? What do you find? You find the, physio the philosophical stone. This is the vitriol, literally, in alchemy or hermetism, okay? The, the notion of uh, uh, finding something deep inside. This is the same principle of jihad in Arabic. What does it mean? It's absolutely not what the media try to, to shape our mind. It is absolutely not what the ignorance of certain minority try to, uh, to, to fake news. It's not that. Jihad literally means struggle. It is just an inner battle in between what we call the shaitan in Arabic means the obstacle. In Hebrew, it's Satan. It's the same sound because Hebrew and Arabic have the same origin. The Satan, the Satan in English, is the obstacle of what? Of the light. And the light, how do we say in English or in, um, in Hebrew or in Arabic, is the same, the same origin, aur, aur or nur, el nur, in, in Arabic is el nur, nur, or aw, okay? And that's why, actually, that's, this is just an inner battle in between the light and the darkness that you have. You, we all have a dark side. I can be sometimes uh, a demon when I'm really, really, really pissed off, or when I'm, I'm disgusted, exhausted, when I have enough. Of course, I'm a devil. I become, uh, I hate, and I hate everybody at this moment. I'm losing uh, control, I'm losing, I'm human, I'm human. We will see that in practice later, in the future, to try to see how 
uh, it's good sometimes to release and to say some bad word. Fuck you! <sighs> feel better, like going to toilet. Bam! And then you feel better. I know it's down to her, I know. But this is super important. Not to try to pretend to be someone else, to be to hire yourself, oh, and so on. No, be yourself, it's that as well. Accept who you are is very important, is the deep inside. I clean up, okay? I try to manage myself. Sometimes I'm hungry. Why am I am hungry? I self-analyze myself, okay? I analyze myself. So this is important to see this is jihad. This is literally the jihad. To try to give more chance to your angel, little angel, inner angel, or positive forces, your light, instead, and you let the darkness downside. And this is question of vibration. Here, literally today, I feel good. I feel good. I'm in paradise. I'm in uh, heaven. Uh, if I'm hungry and I want to fuck everybody and uh, kill them all, I mean, literally, in hell. I'm in inferno. Inferno, in Latin, it means to be uh, trapped in a certain extent. You are trapped in your hangering. You're outside. Ego, age, got out in a certain extent. So, in the Bible, it's, it's more of some culture, but it's literally, it's written like this. The kingdom of heaven is among you. Literally in Aramaic should be translation like um, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Unity. Universal. This is you, you, ni, ver, sal. The sal, the seat of sal, the third eye and so on. The eye of This is this. It means literally this. Why trying to, to find from outside? To f try to expect something else. This is one of the danger of the spirituality. This is what we call the spiritual ego. It's the fact first to, um, to wait like outsourcing. Okay, Jesus came and he cleaned up all our uh, sins. Okay, and we saw what's happened. 2,000 years of peace, harmony, paradise on earth. We saw it. Okay, what does it mean? It means that he was just as a say, Christ, crystal, crystal clear. But it was not so crystal clear, apparently. It's the same principle that Buddha. They don't care about having a statue. They just taught a, a wisdom that they find within themselves. They have been inspired, okay? And then they just aspire to people, apply the same thing. It's just this, to clean up inside trauma and so on. This is what we saw in the, the cleansing of, uh, the, 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 let's say, the, darkness, the, the experience of life, and also just to put on the good, on the good um, let's say, place, the ego, and just to express your divinity. But concretely, it's the same message, actually. You know, it's the same metaphor than um, the, you know, the Brahma and uh, his abilities as individual gods like an assembly, a summit, and they try to find a way, a place to hide the divinity, the godness, the human godness. So one of them proposed to Brahma uh, to dig and to put in, inside the heart, the core of earth, okay, Mother Earth. And Brahma said, no, one day they will find some technology to find it and so on. And they will resell and so on, they will use as a business so a second option, someone else, I mean, another God, propose uh, to put in the, in, the, um, in the oceans. Same, Brahma say, in the future, they will have some technology for pressure and so on. They will succeed by reaching. Okay, third option, let's send very far away, in a very, uh, very far away, in different uh, year lights and so on. He said, no, they will find a way for a technology and so on. So all of them, they say, where are we going to put it? And Brahma say wisely, we're going to put somewhere as a fortress, preserving against the darkness and the low energies. We're going to put 
within his heart. And this is super deep. Why? Because one thing very important. There is in Gnosism, okay, Gnosis, this is the esoteric part of Christianity. It is the very important message which, which is in the Bible, but not really well perceived. It's in the verse 40, if my memory is correct. Anyway, this, it's written, let's uh, make the two in one. What does it mean? Make the two in one means literally to visualize, visualize uh, thinking plus with your heart. The co-creation is with the good vibration, effectively you feel it. Ah, I feel successful, for instance. And then I visualize as well. It's both combined. Otherwise, just feeling or just thinking, it doesn't work. That's why we are mixing Westerner vision, Westerner, Easterner, Westerner vision, like a mix, both of them. In Western, in West, we think more. In East, we think, we feel more. And actually, to obtain is a combining of both philosophy, okay? Is to think, to visualize, and also to feel things. And actually, this is really deep. But actually, all the roads lead to Rome and to home means that. Um, Shambhala, the concept in, in Buddhism and Hinduism, what is it, Shambhala, concretely? This is the paradise. It's not terrestrial, it's not down to earth, it's not celestial, okay? It is here, it's the same principle. So some of them, some people say it's in Mongolia. I, I went personally, physically, where they call in Mongolia. <clears throat> Uh, it's close to the desert of Gobi. Yeah, it exists. I went there. It's high vibration and so on. Yeah, literally, it's true. It's telluric and a lot of people discharge as well. So, and there is a place also in Tibet. But actually, it's just a metaphor. Because once you reach this, this point, this endless point, this gate, with, uh, this gateless gate in a certain extent, you open up the doors of consciousness without any perspective. I mean, it's endless. There is the horizon. It's just your view which limits you. But the horizon doesn't really exist because you can go further and there will be the sea and there will be a mountain and so on and so forth because it's a sphere, okay? It's a bubble. Right? So it's the same principle. And we can turn, turn, turn like this. It's always the same principle. But what is really interesting is this notion because esoteric, exoteric, esoteric, okay, what does it mean, esotericism? Ezo in Greek means inside, okay, inside. And actually, all, when I insist so much in all initiatory process, is not outside, is inside. That's why. In a certain extent, the new, new age movement, certain people, they are very attractive, excited by, um, let's say, uh, out-of-body experience, UFO, or channeling and so on. They want to know the future. What about the future? You think, you expect that it will be better in the future, that's why, um, without not doing anything? UFO, you think they will arrive and they will save us like Jesus did and so on, or some other prophet and so on. We saw what's happened. We need to do by our own. This is very important thing. We cannot um, nourish someone. I mean, we can help, but he has to, to chew and at least to swallow by his own. Uh, we cannot go to toilets for someone else. It's the same principle. So we need to do the job. The first initiatory job is that the fact to clean up and also to evolve. We cannot expect some, someone else. Um, by the way, in the, in the Netflix movie, Meshia, is, there is one character for me who understands perfectly. Is the guy from CIA or uh, FBI. Yeah. Uh, he just saw a testimony and he just understood that there is divinity within earth, within himself as well. So he come back to normal activity. 
No need to sacralize, to deify a new person. Not at all. For what? To take a selfie? Oh, look at it. No, why? You know, it's really important. So the fact to outsource with uh, coming from the sky, from the clouds and so on, is really limited vision. And uh, or uh, out, uh, out of body experience is interesting. Uh, my first one was when I was 21 years old. I testified a lot because it was my revelation. But it's not a finality. It's like uh, I do some things to find it back to because I had the, an insight uh, about space time and so on. Yeah, it was literally extraordinary. And uh, a lot of it reassured me on the process of death. There is no death, it's endless, it's life after life and so on. The space time is entangled and so on. Yeah, but down to earth, what does it bring me? Just the fact I know there is something after. There is different vib vibration and thereby there is a kind of superposition of the state of mind and the realities. Yeah, so practically it brought me that. But if I'm running away because I don't like my life, I don't like this system, I don't like my wife, I don't like my job, I don't like uh, life in general, and I just want to go out because when I feel like this is like artificial paradise, like drugs, is a kind of, uh, let's say, um, running away. It's like fleeing in a certain extent. It's dangerous because life is down to earth. Spirituality is here. This is what I really try to show you practically down to earth. Okay? The spirituality is not the exclusivity of the temple is not the exclusivity of a prayer. A prayer is now, is nature, is in the good food, is a good laugher, is, is for everything. And this is according to our eyes and the vibration of our heart. This is extremely important to consider things like this because it's for me honoring the living and to let him, her, it expressing through us this is very important according to me and uh, you know this is for me really this the notion of practitioner a practitioner is literally not necessarily someone doing um, going to church uh, doing uh, five times a day some prayers and so on is giving heart if you don't have any tag, no religion and so on, and you spend 60 years of your life in a charity association, and you give and you give all your heart, all your heart, regardless the ethnic, the religion, regardless people, don't you think that these people are not modern prophets, are not divinity? Personally, I deeply feel it. Okay, and I don't need a recognition or someone to say, yeah, you're right. Because it's common sense, okay? If you do, you go to church and after you go out and you say, fucking, I don't know, fucking ethne, a fucking, is this this? The message you heard, <laughs> you understood, but you don't put it in practice. Okay, it's not a judgment, it's just common sense. I'm going to tell you something very important, because normally opening is okay, the word. Uh, spirituality is still okay. Religion, <sighs> taboo. We cannot talk about religion because um, it's sacred, yeah, but we can also respect. And why not talking about religion? Religion means something very important. Religare, in, um, in Latin, it means to really, to connect. Okay, so the first recognition is within us, okay? Second is to the living in general, the living God, invisible word, and so on, nature, and then also through human beings, through your religion and beyond of the religion. It should be perceived, and I spend a lot of time of my life to establish some similarities, complementarities in between all the religion, the main ones. And this is really interesting because all of them converge from the same source to the same ocean, okay? For which you are not a drop in the ocean, you are an entire ocean within a drop. It's the same principle. But actually what is interesting is it should be perceived as, you know, the, the, the symbol of Olympic Games, 
okay, entangled uh, rings, okay, because they are complementarities. And uh, believer or unbeliever, officially, unofficially, we don't mind at the end. What is important is how people feel in harmony and they express the living consciously, unconsciously, as long as they emit light, as long as they respect the process of life, human beings and so on, and they are in harmony, what else? What else concretely? You see, this is for me, all this is an initiation. So concretely, there is not necessarily practice because what I try to say here is the fact that the great book of light, of life, sorry, the great book of life, life, is this, is how to read it through the synchronicities and is always, each moment, each single second. The present is a gift. Grasp it now, okay? Pre-sent, previously sent, okay? So it is a wonderful treasure for which when we are accessing to it, it's touching eternity. Ether, the fifth element, eternity of the, the, the fifth element encompassing everything is reaching oneness, okay? And this is absolutely fantastic, magic even. And actually, for me, this is really important because I told you my way of teaching is that is holy style of life. It means everything is sacred according to our eyes. And second, in practice. And secondly, is the tip. Tip is my methodology. Tip is like an advice. It's theory, intuition, practice. You learn from the books, from the, let's say, the theories, the text, and so on, or the teaching, training, whatever, okay? Like recipe of food, of cooking. Right, that's good. Then practice. You try by your own, uncooked, too much, burn, and so on. And by adjusting, tuning, fine tuning, it will be, oh, good, better, mm, tasty, Ooh, delicious, oh, amazing, you see? And step by step, you have the texts, you have the recipe, you have some special foods, some special dishes, and then, oh, why not uh, adding a new thing, I don't know, a curry in a... I don't know, chili con carne, uh, uh, or, and, and then you can mix up, you can change it a little bit by your intuition, okay, by your experience. You will develop your intuition, and you can do by your own. You can do with your own recipe, your own, at your own sauce in a certain extent. You can add something else. It will be uh, uh, novelty through uh, assembling, but you can also initiate from scratch, okay? This is this, what I try to give you, is the fact, and this is why we saw so many keys to shape your own master keys, to open up the door, but then, once again, is your own way to do it. And once again, everything. Some people, my, I, I met many um, insiders, they, never, they have never been taught, let's say, with, uh, by talking, by teaching, by, uh, no, they just received and in Ayurvedic, we say, so literally Ayurveda means science of life or art of living, we can say. And actually, it is said that at the beginning is, is old as humanity. And the first, um, with men, uh, with, uh, with women, <laughs> uh, they have been taught naturally, intuitively like this. Okay, so not in necessarily what I really try to tell you. You can learn all the books of uh, the world heritage, it will not necessarily bring you, this is general culture, this is good, but it will be not necessarily give you the keys to open up your heart and the practice, I mean, to share this light with people and with unconditional love, all right? So here, there will be no practice because everything could be a practice as an initiation to admire life in general, the living. Well, I really invite you to meditate on this video, to take notes. Why not to try to 
to, to, to share with people, to see the perception and so on. And in general, because this, we reach uh, the end of this series, to watch back other ones and to try to read your notes and so on, because the goal is not necessarily that you, you have a certain uh, capital of knowledge, but the most important is you understand, but more, you understand. You understand that you vibrate. You vibrate, you feel it. And then, more than this, you put in practice. Otherwise, not a big deal. Okay, but very important is no endless pathway. Okay, I told you. This series of video of 20, it was more theory. We will have another series of 20 more video. It will be more practice, purely practice, by the way. 20 minutes, 30 minutes maximum of practice. The first one, first key, will be uh, meditation. Uh, I have a course of meditation online. It's five or six hours. I explain the ins, the outs, and so on, the history, and the, it's quite deep, of course. But for us, okay, two minutes, maybe ins, outs, in text, why, the reason why, and so on, and then go to the point, strength to the point, to give you the tips, the different techniques, okay, for you to practice, to meditate, and or so to try to do it as soon as possible. The first one, second one will be breathing and so on. So it will be really practical much more because this is for me probably not the most important, but theory without practice for me, as we say, you know, practice makes perfect. Well, once again, meditate on that. This is one key, revise the other one because step by step, Maybe it's already done, but you will shape your own master key to open up the doors of consciousness, and it's only up to you, universe, which is within you. And as you know now, all the roads lead to Rome and to home. Thank you very much for your attention, and see you soon.